Hi there. Welcome to MCSI. My name is Sonia. In this video, I will introduce you to a simple process that you can follow during a forensic investigation. Here is a case study to help you understand the process better. We will invent a scenario for an imaginary organization called PAX Technologies. It has been a busy week at PAX Technologies. This morning, multiple users reported seeing a suspicious alert window on their computer. It appeared that a cybersecurity breach was in progress. The computer security team was immediately notified. The digital forensics professionals have been tasked with identifying the exact sequence of activities that led to this cyber incident. Are you wondering how they would go about this? They would follow a precise, methodical approach to get to the bottom of this incident. I will tell you about this approach. During the first phase, the digital forensic professionals obtain a clear view of what they are dealing with. An incident statement is drafted to declare what the incident is all about and what the goals of this investigation are. For the incident at PAX Technologies, the goal is to identify who or what caused the cyber breach. Then an incident dimensions document is drafted to obtain detailed insight into the incident. Some information that would be documented are on which computer was the alert observed first? What activity was the user doing when the alert popped up? On which computers were the alerts not observed, etc.? The next phase involves acquiring forensic evidence using standard tools. Typically, on Windows computers, artifacts like event logs, prefetch files, scheduled tasks, etc., are acquired and analyzed. We have two videos explaining the top forensic artifacts on Windows machines and the tools you can use to process them. You can find the links to those videos in the description box below. Once all the evidence has been acquired, there will be a large volume of data for the forensic investigator to process and arrive at inferences. It is necessary to have some direction to analyze the evidence. For this purpose, the forensic investigator generates a list of hypotheses and tests them. For the incident at PAX Technologies, some possible hypotheses are in the process of downloading an email attachment. One user had unknowingly downloaded malware onto their system. The malware has propagated to other machines over the network. For each hypothesis, the digital forensic investigator searches thoroughly through all the available evidence to prove whether the hypothesis is valid or not. Once all the hypotheses have been tested and validated, there will be enough evidence to trace exactly how the incident had occurred. In this phase, the forensic investigators map the detailed account of each event that led to the breach in an incident timeline. The final phase involves briefing all the stakeholders involved in the mission, in this case, senior officials and system administrators at PAX Technologies. Recommendations are offered to ensure that the same incident does not occur again. All the findings from the forensic investigation are documented in a detailed report. Now you are familiar about the different phases in a forensic investigation. However, every investigation is unique. You will be required to adapt your approach relevant to the case in front of you. If you liked this video, please hit like and share this video on social media. Don't forget to subscribe to MCS, a YouTube channel to receive more videos like this one. Join our online community of students learning useful cybersecurity skills if you haven't already. To register for a free account right away, go to our website. Happy learning and see you soon.